Hi guys. Uh, so uh, happy Saturday night's all right for social distancing, as we've said. Uh, Saturday night's all right for curfews. Saturday night's all right for closures. And Saturday, Saturday, Saturday night's all right for, well, it is actually all right for staying home with the uh, family. It is not all right for gathering with anyone. What, Mayor? You heard me, don't gather with anyone. Hmm. Got it, Baldo? Don't gather with anyone. Okay. Well, I mean, you could gather with your doom and gloom thoughts, I guess. Or you could gather together your bad ideas in your mind and think about how to roll them out and inflict them on the people. <laughs> okay. Thank you for nice words because uh, I had a listener, morning answer, uh, listening family member. Give me George W. Bush came out and I don't exactly know why. <laughs> I tried to suppress it when I said, morning answer listening family member. <laughs> And then it was a full expulsion. <laughs> uh, so uh, the number 17 was thrown out there. And I said, oh, that's my birth date. So that I needed that number to limit all of the, um, to limit all of the, uh, all of the stuff I could put on a most memorable little uh, presentation on YouTube. And it was 50, 55 minutes. Now I want to be clear. Um, the, uh, they were to me, you know, just to me, the 17 most memorable moments. And it's fun, you know, it's fun to listen. It was fun to, it was actually, uh, creative and, uh, like, it's just something I wanted to do, you know, it was, I guess it was probably cathartic if I called Dr. Laura Schlesinger. Thank you for taking my call. And in advance, I want to thank you for yelling at me and making me cry before the end of the call. Brian, go right ahead. <laughs> She's a nice lady. Actually, I met Dr. Laura once and I thought she'll be like distant and she was so nice. I mean, she was so nice to me. I, she had no idea who I was. I'm quite certain of that. Who did I? Oh, I also met Joan Rivers once who I love, 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 love and miss very much at the Kentucky Derby of all places with Rick Dees in the year 1999 where you've heard that story. I can't tell that story now. I'll have to, that one takes a week. But Joan Rivers, Al Gore was, the, well, hi, how are you? I mean, I couldn't push Al Gore out of the way fast enough to get to Joan Rivers. And have you ever pushed Al Gore out of the way? He falls, have you ever pushed a, uh, a piece, three sheets of plywood bound together over and just go, that's how Al Gore falls. Mr. Vice President, out of my, I have to, it's Joan Rivers, poof, and he just goes right down. And, I, and Joan Rivers was on the radio in New York at the time. See, it's all coming back to what I'm gonna to present to you. And Joan Rivers uh, was on WOR, AM 710, and she did the Joan Rivers show. When I had three, she went there, I remember numbers hisses comes up, and I just love Joan. And I was introduced to her, and I said, I'm a very big fan, and I was introduced, ah, as her co radio colleague, oh God, which I hated that because um, there's really no reason ever to say her name and mine in the same sentence. And I said, well, I'm on, uh, you know, WABC. And she said to me, Joan Rivers, very sweet. She said, oh, I'm sorry. And I said, I'm Brian Whitman. Um, I think I called her Joan. I mean, there was that kind of warmth about her. And she said, and I quote, I know the name, I, I know the name. And I said, okay which is probably, which can't be a lie. She knows the name because I just said it to her. But I think she was just trying to be nice because I think she is a really nice person, was a really nice person. It's still, you know, ah, anyway, New York. So I was on the air in New York. And the reason I mentioned I'm 48 is because it was exactly half my life ago oh. that I was 24 and I had my first, got my first talk radio gig, my first job. And I, again, you know, not about hitting the lottery or being lucky. This is like picking, you know, the 19 winning Powerball numbers in a global competition when no one else picks all of the numbers and every living human buys a ticket. That's the chances of that happening. 
as far as I'm concerned, to put me on WABC. So they put me on the all-night show. And uh, someone put on YouTube, uh, I took one segment. Now, this is not a best of, or, I, you know, it's not. It's four months, four months into my talk radio career. It's August 2nd, 1997. And I was 24 years old at that time. It's, and I'm just talking to callers, and it's the middle of the night. And, I, and the great thing about radio, I've said forever, is the intimacy of the medium, right? People listen in the shower. People listen in bed. People listen uh, when they're getting dressed, when they have their underpants on. I mean, or alone in their car on the freeway. But nobody does that. And so it's very intimate. Now, take that intimacy, exponentially increase it, because it's New York City, and it's the middle of the night. Now, the city never sleeps, but this was my first radio talk show on the legendary WABC. And I remember they said, I said to them, I said, you know, you guys are crazy. I mean, it's really, and they said, nah, come on, you're crazy. I said, well, I never told you I wasn't, but you're proving stuff that I didn't think you guys were capable of. And they said, just go on and, you know, talk about the news of the day, WABC. If you're talking about it, we're talking about it. And do your bits and be Brian and just do it in your own creative way. And I thought, oh my gosh. And that day I did, I bought a Powerball ticket. I didn't get one number. So, you know, to quote Al Rantel, the Lord does not giveth with both hands. All right, Mr. Dum Dum. It's me on WABC. I'm, it's half my life ago. That's why I'm, because I deal, I'm a numerologist. It's half my life ago. And it's, um, oh, and I put the images of, which I enjoy doing. New York City at nighttime because very because there's always people around and doing stuff and it was like uh, doing an afternoon show in Denver or something but New York City at night in the darkness and it's it's I, I like how this came out uh, just the pictures and the whole thing the radio show eh, I hope you like it you know, I've been listening to you for the past couple of weeks and I think you do a good job oh thank you <clears throat> but uh, regarding this moving around I think you have to put it in perspective I mean you are basically the, the low man on the totem pole, pole at the station. I mean, you're working the, the, the two to six shift or whatever, you know? Yeah, but I'm still an on-air host. I mean, I'm still part of the bread and butter of the radio station. I, I shouldn't be kicked out of my workspace for another manager. Please, we have enough of them already. Right, but I mean, they could basically put a monkey on going... <laughs> it would be the same ratings, basically, that you get. Oh, really? Why don't you come on and make those noises? Okay, I'll do it right now. <laughs> Yeah. You know what, Steve? I'm not, I'm not going to talk to you now because you've offended me. So I'm going to hang up on you now. All right? If you think a monkey can do this job, then you come up and do it, you monkey. Now, that went well. During questioning, her grandchildren were separated from the adults and held backstage where they saw cartoon characters removing their costumes. Ho, <laughs> ho! The kids saw Mickey Mouse take his head off. And Billy Jean Matei claims, oh, trauma, absolute trauma, emotional distress, and absolute trauma. Disney workers traumatized my three grandchildren by exposing them to the reality that the Disney characters were, in fact, make-believe. Oh, no. Ho, ho. So, she's suing, and she wants money, cash, cha-ching, greenbacks. I say... She's crazy. This is another one of these frivolous lawsuits that are, that, are, that are sucking this country down. Paul, who is filling in for the very gifted Carl Cush on the control boards. Paul is a very gifted engineer himself. Paul is studying to be a snake. Uh, I mean, a lawyer. Paul believes that that this woman should be able to bring this case before the judge. Why? Why? Paul believes because Paul is looking out for himself. C-Y-A. C-Y-C-A. Cover your colleagues' asses. Paul thinks that, well, you know, you got to make a living, right? This may be a crazy lawsuit. This may be frivolous and offensive and, quite frankly, dumb. But Paul's got no problem hearing this one out in a court of law. It's because he's going to go, where, NYU? Where are you going, Paul? Oh, he doesn't know. Oh, very interesting. Hmm, it's a big secret. SU, Snake University. 
You know, I'm kidding. Some of my best friends are attorneys. And my attorney is one of my dearest friends. Paul says you should do lawyer jokes on the air, but I did that one morning. I did a whole morning of lawyer jokes. So I don't want to do that again because I've already done it. But. I know what you're thinking, Paul. You're thinking, hey, whatever, any, any flotsam and jetsam we can pull together and present before a judge, as long as it means that I will have an invoice in the mail at week's end, why, darn it, gosh golly, bring it on. This is America. Home of the free and the land of the frivolous lawsuit. Joan on Staten Island, my native Staten Island. Forget about it over there, Staten Island. What are you doing, Joan? Hello. You're from Staten Island? Yes. Oh, gee. Where? Well, I was born in Annadale. Oh. Well, actually, I was born at Richmond Memorial Hospital. Oh, good. And uh, why, why do you say good? Well, I'm a registered nurse. <laughs> Do you work at Richmond Memorial or now yeah, it's... Yeah, I now it's, work in Richmond Memorial. Now it's University Hospital. Oh, yeah. Uh, how long have you worked there? Oh, 10 years. Oh, but so you wouldn't have been responsible for delivering me. No, I don't think so. <laughs> and also, uh, uh, please, I lived in, an, in Annandale and then uh, Princess Bay. I went to Tottenville High School. Well, I live in Duncan Hills. You do, by Bath Avenue? Oh, no. I live off of Four Corners Road. Oh, I had a very good friend. He still is my friend. He, he, he grew up on Bath Avenue. He lived there. Oh, I know where Bath Avenue is, but you wouldn't recognize the neighborhood anymore. <sighs> he went to the Academy of St. Dorothy School. Oh. Do you know where that is off Highland Boulevard? Yes, yes. Yeah, he was a real cut-up. Uh, well, no, things have changed here, but that's not what I called you. I'm sorry that... You have been displaced. <laughs> My cubicle was uh, moved again. Second time in, uh, in uh, two months. Well... Three uh, cubicles, three different work areas in four months for me. Well, I've been a nurse for 25 years, and I've been displaced. I can't even count it. Yeah. And I'm a manager. All right, so... I'm a working stiff. Oh, you yeah, know, well, I'm a working stiff, too. So don't feel bad. You have a comment on this Disney lawsuit? Yeah, I do. Uh, I think it's the stupidest thing I ever heard because you know what when I was five years old I didn't believe Mickey Mouse was a real person on television so it's like what do people do these things for they want money everybody's looking to make a quick buck and no one wants to work for it right no I guess it's true um uh, but Everybody, you know, I was listening to all the remarks that went past. Um, the, whoever, the lady or the man that went behind the stage and took the hat off. Yeah. They're entitled to relax. Okay, they're entitled to let their hair down or whatever. Take their hat off. Right. Jim and Queens are on WABC. Hi, Jim. Yeah, hi. How are you? Pretty good. Uh, I really don't think this is frivolous because uh, I've worked as an entertainer myself. And I think that you really what, what what field of entertainment, Jim? Uh, I've actually worked in radio and cable TV and and music and you know. What would we know you, Jim? No, no, no. Is your is your <laughs> last name you is your last name Neighbors? <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, but uh, <clears throat> you know the point is you're marketing a product that's like Coca Cola or Budweiser beer or whatever, and people ex expect a certain image, and I think you have a, a responsibility to deliver that. You know, to the kids. To I, maintain the theme? Yeah. Yeah? You know, I, I, I really do. But, but, know, but I think you, that's part of your job when you, I mean, you work in, you're in the entertainment business, you know, I mean, talk radio is entertainment also, and I, I, I think people ought to expect if somebody uh, recognizes you on the street or something, you should treat them, you know, the way you would if you were on the air. Yeah, I do. I mean, I'm I'm very nice uh, when I meet people. And, yeah, no, and, well, that's what and, I mean. and, and I'm you, assuming if, you do. I mean, I'm and not, if you, you know. want to meet me, you can come and see me at the Rockaway Beach Family Fun Fair on Sunday, and I'll be I'll be sickeningly nice. Yeah, but will I get mugged and stabbed on the subway going out there? <laughs> well, God willing, you won't. But now, let me say this to you: This yep. woman, Billie Jean Matei, is suing that her children, her grandchildren, ages five to eleven. They were exposed to the reality that the Disney characters were, in fact, make-believe when her grandchildren saw cartoon characters removing their costumes. Mickey took his head off in front of the kids. You well, mean to I tell think, me... All right, well, th that may be unfortunate, but, but, but is, is that worthy of financial retribution? Uh, 
You see, again, it's an image thing. Don't forget, in show business, we put on an image. It's like when I do my country music act, I come on as a, oh. you know, a, a hard hick? drinking, you a know, hick. a carousing person. Red, redneck hick. Yeah. Yeah. You know, which is not what I am in real life. No, I can you tell. Know what I mean, it's an act I put on, but yet if somebody on the street, you, you, know, you Do you kick a few teeth out before you go on stage and, and not shower for a week before the uh, performance? Only if it's necessary. <laughs> <laughs> do you... Do you get all roughly shaven? You let your uh, let your facial hair grow out there, and oh, of course. You know, don't shower, stink yourself up for a well, week, I... and kick a few teeth out, spit out a few chicklets, and get up on there on that stage and <laughs> start singing about your lost dog and your lost horse and your lost wife and your lost right, she, lost. What house. I did with a sheep one time. Hey, That's now. another story. I'll do the jokes, Jim, if you don't mind. Oh, no, okay. Just called to mention, you know, mention that capital cities and their intimate wisdom must expand at Penn Plaza. I mean, it seems they don't have enough space for you guys. You think we need to maybe take over another floor or something? Oh, without a doubt. Without a doubt. You know, I mean, experience dictates that if you're going to expand your operation you can, and you can add staff, you need space for them. Yeah. I mean... Maybe they don't plan on staying in this building. Well, I, ho I would hope they... They would. It's a, it's a nice building. It is a nice building. But there's probably nicer buildings, to be honest with you. I know there's nicer buildings. Well, I mean, you can move into ABC headquarters. Yeah, with Peter Jennings and Regis and Kathy Lee. Oh, without a doubt. That'd be fun, huh? Rebecca in Indiana, you're on WABC. Good morning, Rebecca. Hi. Um, I'm calling about Disney. Rebecca, you're 15, right? Yeah. Didn't you call the other morning? Uh-huh. How are things this morning in Indiana? Cool. My little brother's here. How old is your brother? Um, He's 11. Put him on the phone. Richardson. I have to ask him a question. You're loud. Hi, Richard. He won't talk. Oh. <laughs> um, All right, you're 15. Do you remember when you were 11? Yeah. Do you remember when you were 5 and 6? Yeah. If you went to Disneyland, would did you really think that the Mickey Mouse walking around was really a mouse, or did you know it was really a person in a costume? A person in a costume. Yeah, there you go. See? You're a bright one, Rebecca. Yeah. Isn't it silly that this woman is suing Disneyland because her kids... I mean, one of uh, her children were aged 5 to 11, and uh, just your brother's age, 11 years old. Now, your brother knows that's not really a mouse, doesn't he? Yeah, I hope. Put him on the phone. Richardson. And turn your radio off. Hear the radio in the background? It's all right. I'll, I'll give them a hall pass. Richardson? He won't talk. Is his name Richardson? Yeah, he won't talk. He's shy. All right, Rebecca. Well, I'm glad you've called again. When do you have to go back to school? The 13th. Of September? Yeah. Um, August. Aug Whoa, what in the world? Yeah. August 13th? Yeah. What kind of public school or private school is that? Is it uh, public? You go to public school? Yeah. They make you go back August 13th? Yeah, we get out in May. Oh, all right. See, I like getting out in June. When I went to school, we got out in June and went back in September. That's the way to do it. Yeah, well, my little brother goes back. He's already started. He goes to all year round school. Ugh. So you have two more weeks to enjoy the show in the middle of the night. Then you're going to have to go to bed because you'll have school in the morning. Yeah, unfortunately. Well, you call me again before school starts. Okay, I think you rock. Thank you. I think I rock myself. Okay. Bye-bye, Rebecca. Bye. Okay, thank you. I'm all that and a bag of chips. Thank you, Rebecca. You rock. All right, you rock, kiddo. Quick question. How much was the bill that you left the bill waiter a tip that he got so ticked off? All right, the uh, actual bill amount was thirty nine fifty. The tax was some $3. It came to $42.76. I gave him $50. And he got that offended? He did. I said, grazie. And I, get, you know, I tried to get into the spirit of the Italian restaurant. I went, oh, yeah. grazie. And he didn't even say prego. And he gave me a dirty look and walked away without saying a word. So some of those waiters in Manhattan could be quite hoity. Yeah, I got to think that if any waiters or service people are listening to me, they, they should be offended by this. I was done wrong. From the worldwide resources of ABC News.